honored, privileged individual. He has had the honor of delivering the Azan, the call to prayer in Haram Sharif in the Noble Sanctuary. And he, he works tirelessly in, with unflinching commitment Azan, to the, the Holy Quran in, in ensuring that the intonation of the Quran, the recitation of the Quran is correctly recited, particularly amongst the young generation. And we uh, applaud that work and the service to the Quran of Qari Hassan Rasul. Uh, Qari Hassan Rasul, please uh, enlighten us with your recitation. Jazakumullahu khayr al jazah. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings to all who are watching, uh, who are watching live and who will watch later, inshallah. Uh, just before I start, there's a verse in the Quran, part of the verse, uh, Allah, God Almighty talks about how excellent a reward for those who work righteousness. And this is why I chose these verses. I read these, these verses quite often and I find, uh, always I find an excuse to read these verses because uh, congratulations to all the finalists. You are doing the same work that Allah is talking about. And we pray that you will be rewarded handsomely, inshallah. Uh, there's no doubt that you will. Without further ado, we'll recite these few verses, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. A'udhu billahi minash rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim بَهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ فَادْخُلُوهَا وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا وَعْدَهِ وَأَوْرَثَنَا الْأَرْضَ نَتَبَوَّغُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيْثُ نَشَاءُ فَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ وَتَرَى الْمَلَائِكَةَ حَافِينَ مِنْ حَوْلِ وَتَرَى الْمَلَائِكَ تَحَافِينَ مِنْ حَوْلِ الْعَرْشِ مِنْ حَوْلِ الْعَرْشِ يُسَبِّحُونَ من حول العرش يسبحون بحمد ربهم 
وَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَقُضِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَقِيلَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَضَاقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمِ ما شاء الله ما شاء الله بارك الله فيكم جزاكم الله السلام عليكم for well, purposes of time, we won't do the translation. Uh, this is the last few verses of Surah Zumar. So, uh, Assalamu Alaikum and congratulations to all the possible winners, inshallah. Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu. Jazakumullah Qari Hassan Rasul. We are absolutely overwhelmed with the melodious recitation that you have shared with us. This was indeed a therapeutic recitation. It's spiritually uplifting, it's invigorating. And it's a perfect commencement and start to today's evening. Uh, moving on from that melodious recitation, may I now invite the CEO of uh, Faith Associates to share with us the vision of uh, Beacon Mosques and the challenges that were faced by the communities in the year 2020. Brother Shokat Varaj who has been working tirelessly uh, in the community for nearly two decades, working very closely with madrasas, masajid, mosques, um, and he has no doubt attempted to add value um, at different levels. And I invite him now to share with us the poignant salient points of the Beacon Mosque vision and the challenges faced um, in his experience over the past year. Brother Shokat. Welcome, Ahlan wa Sahlan. Assalamu alaikum. Auzu billahi min shaitan rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ya Rasul al-Kareem. Dear respected uh, elders, respected brothers and sisters, respected scholars, mosque leaders from around the world, and my dear host, Mahmoud Chandia, I wish you all peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, Mahmoud, thank you to you. Uh, we have not done your introduction. Uh, if I may just take 30 seconds to say thank you, first of all, for being this wonderful host. I know you've done it before and you've done an exemplary task in the previous years and many people asked us to have you again. I'm so grateful to you for being our host and compare this evening. And you are one of our judges and one of our very, very senior advisors on the Islamic side and the intellectual side, as well as various other elements of our work, you provided with great counsel. I'm so grateful to you for hosting us this evening. Um, just before I talk about the vision about Bika Mosque, I also want to thank, first of all, the all the uh, speakers that you're going to see this evening, all these wonderful people, uh, very notable people that will be giving the awards tonight. I thank them for sparing their valuable time this evening to be able to give out the awards. Also, I want to thank everybody who has come and who has been shortlisted because actually before the COVID crisis, we'd actually booked a very large hotel uh, in, the, in London to host this event, just as we've done in the past two years. But as you know, with the COVID pandemic, uh, everything has turned upside down and the world is operating in a very different way. So we had to cancel that uh, booking and we said that we could not stop the momentum that we had about the Beacon Mosque. People were asking from around the country if we were going to have the awards again and we felt compelled uh, to do the awards uh, virtually this time. SubhanAllah, as Mahmoud uh, earlier uh, alluded to the response has been fantastic in terms of the number of nominations over 500 uh, nominations came in uh, those nominations had to be whittled down to around about 40 30 to 40 finalists which you will see today and then obviously the judges uh, uh, have decided 
who are going to be the winners tonight in those 11 categories. I've seen some of the nominations. I've had the pleasure of visiting some of these people in the vetting process. I've had the benefit of interviewing and listening to some of the potential winners and subhanAllah, I, can, I must say that these masajids, these leaders are great ambassadors of Islam, great ambassadors of the British Isles, great ambassadors of the whole community in some of the work that they're doing. I am, I am in awe uh, by some of these people. They have done amazing work. And this year, our focus has been around this whole COVID crisis. And we've thought to ourselves, how can we best exemplify some of the work and some of the winners, and actually most of the winners have done exemplary work during the COVID crisis. If I may just quickly, there's three points I wanted to get across. One, the vision, what's the vision here? Beacon mosques. The idea is to exemplify the Medina model. The Medina model of the Prophet peace be upon him is the benchmark of the highest standards of how Muslims can live within a society and deliver exceptional work, exceptional services to all of humanity. Because in Medina during the Prophet's time, there were many, 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 even the majority in the early stages were non-Muslims. And this mosque in Medina served everybody, Muslim as well as non-Muslim, pagans, Jews, Christians, people of faith and no faith. This institution was the benchmark that we in the 21st century want to copy. So the vision is the Medina model and, the, and the, in the footsteps of the Prophet peace be upon him and his companions. Secondly, is to demonstrate excellence. Who are the people that are doing things in an exceptional way, who are doing the things in the best quality? We live in the West and we can see people who are excelling in every field, whether it's leadership, management, medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, engineering, philosophy. There are people that are at the height of the, their skills. Muslims should e equally express excellence. And my dear beloved brother in his surah touched upon the issues of excellence. Allah talks about excellence, the key word, ihsan, that the believers should rush and compete with each other to be excellent and achieve excellence. And my last point, this whole exercise is about sharing. It's about seeing what works, what is effective, and is there a possibility that we could replicate and then possibly in, and enhance what people are doing in other cities. And I can honestly say, since the past two years, and this is now our third year, I have heard so many stories, and I, it heartens me to say this, that people have seen these beacon mosques, visited these beacon mosques, and learned from them taken the best practice and brought it back into their mosques. And some of the winners this year who have not won before have basically been involved in that transition and transference of knowledge. And that was our third in vision point to basically bring people together to learn. I'll leave it at that point there. Thank you so much, Mahoon, for giving me the opportunity to speak. I hope that's clear. And I look forward to hearing who are the winners this year. Over to you, sir. Jazakumullah, Brother Shokat, for your succinct uh, extolment of the vision and the uh, ambition behind that vision as well. Just to summarize, we have a vision to exemplify the high standards that have been provided in the best example by the best of creation. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and salutation be upon our messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The strive for excellence and the need to share so that it become Isa al Sawab for us an ongoing charity. Sa'idu man wu'iza bi ghayrih, it is said, the fortunate is the one who takes heed from others. So let us share knowledge and let us take heed from what is going to be shared with us. We have, of course, different categories which have been acknowledged and the public have uh, shared their views on this. The Beacon Mosque project aims to look at not just the infrastructure, the governance and the people who are behind this. So we have um, looking at the people, the, the ulama, the alimat, the madrasa, the green 
uh, initiatives that are springing up across the country within our madrasas, the youth, the elderly, the outreach, governance structures, and of course, this year we've had COVID. So let us now start with the first category, which is the most uh, innovative service. And to uh, explain and to, for uh, this surprise, and of course, share his wisdom from his many travels across the globe. This is uh, our friend, uh, Brother Adam Kelwick. Uh, allow me to share a few um, biographical details about Brother Adam. He's a Muslim chaplain and an ardent humanitarian project worker who's based in Liverpool. He has a background in international business and management, and he studied at the universities of Liverpool, Toulouse, and Barcelona. What a varied and brilliant uh, experience that would have been. Um, he is a qualified Muslim chaplain, as I have said, and he has engaged with many diverse communities across Merseyside. He has equally been involved in many diverse humanitarian projects on an international level, and currently he's supporting those in need in the Yemen with Syrian relief. Brother Adam Kelvik, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, thank you uh, dearly, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Chandia. Thank you, Shokat, and uh, the Beacon Mosque Awards for this uh, amazing event. Uh, this award, which I'm about to introduce tonight, is the award for the best innovative service. Uh, and I think upon reflection, one of the, the greatest of calamities to befall uh, our Muslim communities in the West is the misuse and the misunderstanding of the term innovation. Uh, because usually when we talk about innovation within uh, our circles, it's within a negative context because we have this concept of bid'ah uh, and this negative innovation, i.e., uh, the introduction of things which are harmful to Muslims and those things which are from without uh, the Islamic understanding and that which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought. However, this past year has taught us, if anything, that those mosques which were the most innovative and innovation here, we're talking about the things which are of benefit to the Muslim community, of benefit to humanity, and do not come from without and do not fall without the circle of that which is accepted by Allah and his messenger. And we've seen a huge shift, uh, one which, to be honest, I believe uh, in terms of places of worship, I, I truly believe the British Muslim community and the mosques up and down our country have set an example for all other religious communities and even non-religious communities in the way that they responded to the challenges when COVID hit and the different services which mosques up and down the country were offering, the way that they dealt with these huge challenges, what we saw in our societies, whether it was this instant uh, reaction to the needs and feeding people food and offering delivery services for the most vulnerable in our societies or whether it was installing state-of-the-art technology at the doors of our masajid to make sure that the pandemic could be dealt with in the best way possible while still facilitating worship for the congregation and th these are just two examples of many many innovative projects which our communities have responded to the challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and I think it's an amazing thing once we start to understand that actually this innovation in its positive meaning is part and parcel of our heritage and not just of our heritage and our history, but of our future, inshallah. And it doesn't take a, a revowed historian to understand that whenever Muslims have been the most innovative throughout history, that is when they have flourished as a community and been able to lead and set examples for everybody else, not just in their local communities and their societies, but for the whole of the world. Our dean is a dean of innovation, of positive innovation, of those things which bring benefit to ourselves, to our communities, to our societies, and to the whole of the world. And it's about time we started talking about in innovation as being a very, very positive thing. So with that, we will be seeing now the nominees for the most innovative, the best innovative services from the Masajid, and we will see those nominees.
Mashallah, so we've uh, seen the nominees, and on that note, it is my pleasure to announce that the British Beacon Mosque Award 2020 for the most innovative service goes to Al Markazul Islami in Bradford. Mashallah. Mashallah, mashallah. Okay, we're looking forward to uh, listening to a few words from the uh, representative of the masjid who has been who has been awarded this award do we have the winner with us as assalamu yes. alaykum wa rahmatullah wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh brother ishti uh, uh, muhammad ishtaq welcome ahlan yeah. wa sahlan and uh, barakallahu feekum many congratulations to you and your Mas institute masjid jazakallah allah ta reward each one just like to say a few words in this uh, moment it alhamdulillah is a very exciting so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, it's truly an honor that al Markiz Islami has been uh, recognized by the, you know, by both the Muslim community and as well as the British uh, Beacon Mosque Awards for all of its work during the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and to be receiving this, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, innov innov innovative uh, service award uh, with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal and blessing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, actually our teacher, as you know, the leadership of our Ustaz Sheikh Mufti. Qazi Hassan Allah Ta'ala preserved them. Uh, you know, Amen. under their leadership, Alhamdulillah, al Markus Islam is playing a, a, a leading role in Bradford in response to the current um, global pandemic that we're going through. And mashallah, some of the brothers I've just seen in the videos, they've actually visited al Markus and got to meet them. Uh, and I just want to mention some of the things that al Markus Islami has done, you know, past the six, uh, six seven months, obviously, through this pandemic. From working closely with you know Bradford Council of Mosque, um, uh, Brother Zulfi, Brother Shtiak, and the brothers there, uh, in order to we we suspended the congregation. We were one of the first people who suspended the prayers. Uh, we provided chaplaincy support to the local hospitals. We produced uh, over five different videos in different languages, uh, which was you know broadcast on national uh, on national media based on national media broadcasts. Other than that, Alhamdulillah. As we know, we knew that a lot of people gonna be suffering through this. So our teacher and some of our other, you know, students, they took the initiative. We actually produced a book called Muslim Funeral Rights in Light of COVID-19, and we also organized various um, uh, funeral workshops that took place here. And then the P4 technology, uh, which Al Markus Islam is one of the um, first machine hold in the UK that has this technology. And with this technology, basically, there's infection identification. When somebody walks into the masjid, the, the temperature is taken straight away. Uh, spread control, we have a seagate. Once you walk into the seagate, your body is fully sanitized. And then there's air purification monitors in the masjid and around uh, our premises, which measures the level of carbon monoxide in the building. And then we can actually, we have purifiers that we can turn on. And what this does is it'll, it'll uh, take in the, uh, the, the bad air and it allows fresh air out. And we can monitor... Uh, the, the air within uh, our our premises. Other than that, we have surface disinfection. Basically, we every Fridays, Friday prayers, we have a fog. We go around, we fog all of the uh, masjid and trying to make it safe for the people that do arrive in the masjid. Well, Mark Islam also, like many of the mosques, Alhamdulillah, you know, on Beacon Masjid here, many of the mosques, you know, up and down the country, we see continuously they they providing education. Uh, it's very important. 
the well-being of people, uh, spiritual and uh, mental well-being of uh, individuals. So that's very, very important. This allowed us to continue the work that Al-Makir Islami is doing here. So Alhamdulillah. And I also like to take this opportunity because I'll give one minute uh, to thank a special thanks to all our al markaz medics. We have a whole, of, we have a team. It, w- it wouldn't be possible without uh, al markaz and the whole of, of uh, our team. So I'd like to thank all of the al markaz medics, uh, a team of doctors who have played a key role in our response. And uh, of course, to everyone for their continued support uh, during this time. And also our congr- uh, those people who attend uh, the masjid, our uh, trustees, our directors, and in particular, mashallah, Buddha Shokar, what I was a, uh, when he did come here, he said, we'll put you down. So I never thought I will be uh, one of the masjid that will get, will get the award. So Alhamdulillah. So this is a uh, blessing of Allah Azawajal. And I'd like to thank you all, mashallah, for uh, giving this award. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah to both Brother Muhammad Ishtiyak and Brother Adam Kelvik. May Allah Azawajal reward you both for your sacrifice of time and your contributions this evening and may Allah Rabbul Alameen continue to take the work of uh, helping humanity and the work of deen from you both Jazakumullah, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh to you both Um, Our next category now is the category of the most impactful alima and to uh, give the award for this particular category, um, Faith Associates welcomes Sister Sahar Zahid. Sister Sahar Zahid is an experienced teacher with a background in history, um, work, background in history of working in both the state sector and the independent sector. She has a, a master's degree and she focused in that on education and middle leadership qualification uh, for the whole school pedagogy. Sister Sahar has been the main chairperson for the Moroccan Youth uh, UK for over 13 years. Phenomenal uh, commitment, uh, providing impactful educational programs uh, in London. She has been a trustee of a major masjid in London and ultimately becoming its chairperson. She has, no doubt, extensive experience at grassroots level of working with the community and running the Masjid Institution. Welcome, Sister Sahar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan marhaban Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be on you all. Welcome to my home, Allah. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to join the British Beacon Mosque Awards once again. Congratulations to all the team for working tirelessly to make it happen. It is much appreciated, but importantly, needed this year more than ever before. The category to award the most impactful alima is a powerful one. We are seeking to award a alima whose work has had a big impact on her mosque and wider community. Also, the award goes a long way in saying that the role of the alima is just as valued as it was during the time of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest scholar of Islam, radiallahu anha, was a woman. Thanks to her and others, a hadith was passed on, Quranic verses were shared, and Islamic practice carried out. Also, we can all agree that for most of us, our own mothers were our first teachers of faith. And so the role a female plays in her own family unit and society celebrates. It is with this message that it's a pleasure to announce the shortlisted, shortlisted alimas for this award are.
It is my pleasure to announce the British Peak in Moscow World 2020 for most impactful Alima is Ustad and Nasheen Boo from Guidance Hub Manchester. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, Mubarak. Sister Noshin, I think you're... Yes, thank you. Jazakumullah. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you so much for this um, honor. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, subhanallah, uh, really, um, I'm, I'm lost for words. I'm speechless for once. Um, but subhanallah, this is such an important, uh, important category, alhamdulillah. And, um, you know, subhanallah, I'm, I'm really humbled there's so many great women, female teachers that are there, that are running our madaris, that are, you know, subhanAllah, they're the forefront of our Islamic establishments. And to be um, called the most impactful, I really think is, is you know, subhanAllah, um, humbling, but in the same time, subhanAllah, it's a great honor. And I'd like to receive this award on behalf of all of our female teachers, because subhanAllah, the work we do, and the sacrifices and the commitments, inshallah, we give to our Islamic institutes. Um, Alhamdulillah, we do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And we seek reward from him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. However, it's beautiful that, you know, um, Beacons Award have acknowledged um, our contribution. So thank you so much. And thank you to Guidance Hub. Thank you to Essential Islam. Thank you to my teacher, Sheikh Muhammad al Yaqubi, who has always encouraged us to, um, to make a difference within the community. So thank you so much. I, I, I'm really humbled. Thank you. Jazakumullah, Sister Nosheen, and many congratulations to you and the center, of course. And Jazakumullah also to you, Sister Sahar, for sharing with us your words of wisdom and your sacrifice of time and participating with us this evening. Jazakumullah to both of you. May Allah Rabbul Alameen reward you both in abundance. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. The next category, category number three, is the Best Green Initiative. The Best Green Initiative Award will be presented by Sister Harfiya Halim. Sister Harfiya uh, has been a trustee of the Islamic Foundation for Ecology and Environmental Sciences, popularly known with the acronym of IFES. Since 2003, she has been involved as a trustee for this organization. Since 2005, she has been helping to run various environmental awareness and recycling projects among the Muslim communities in Tower Hamlets and other London boroughs. She has contributed to two seminars held at the Lambeth Palace. The first seminar, was the climate change seminar in 2009. The second seminar was the sustainability seminar in 2011. She's also a director of the Muslim Women's Collective CIC in Tower Hamlets, for whom she has run an Eco Champions Stroke Recycling Awareness Raising Project and part of a waste inspection project. Sister Harfiya, Jazakumullah for joining us this evening. Um, welcome to the platform and please uh, share with us your vision um, for this award. Ahlan wa sahlan marhaban bikum. Welcome. Uh, Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you for the Hello, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I seem to be having problems conflicting with the, the announcer, Mahmoud Chandia, at the moment. He's, somebody else is talking at the moment, I don't know who it is. Mr. You, you might need to switch off the volume of, on your phone. You might need to switch off the volume of the, on your other device. Thank you. 
Sounds like a dog barking. <laughs> I turn off the volume on my phone. Turn off my phone anyway. Let's, let's still hear them. Okay, I've got some slides to show you about the green mosques with projects we've done over the years. Oh, what a... I think it might be better if I just put them on and let and if, just I, if you've got your Facebook on on your phone, just switch it off. My, my phone is switched off. I don't know somebody else's is on. What's in my eyes? Am I allowed to share my screen? No, no I haven't. Okay. Oh, now that looks more like a Zoom meeting. I can still hear noise. There it is. Can you see my shared screen now? Yes, we can. Good. Oh, thank goodness for that. Something's working. Um, uh, I've been doing uh, Green Mosques uh, workshop. Oh gosh, I'm hearing myself now. Um, uh, Sister Harfia, we are obviously having some technological issues here. We are having some technological issues, yes. Okay. I've got uh, a lag. I can hear myself about. Um, couple of few seconds after I've spoken. That's just a bit confusing. I wonder whether there are any background noises that may be having an impact on your delivery. No, it's more than 30, 30 seconds, I think. Perhaps you should um, carry on um, with your slides. Yes. If I just show the slides and not talk, it might be better. But you're welcome to talk as well. I think the noise levels have reduced now. Okay. Okay, I've only got a few left. This is the most recent thing we did in January 2020. Uh, and the uh, MCV and IFs got together and did a workshop in Crawford Street on Eco Mosques. And there were 70 people present. I don't know if anybody can hear this. Um, we, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Um, love for your patience. We can hear. You. I'll just leave this for people to read. And then I went to the mosque expo um, last year. This is this is a, the last slide. I said it's going to be another one this year, but I hope I hope next year. I mean, it, I hope it will be, um, and that we'll be able to do. The green mosque. Okay, that is the last slide. Um, there are 37 slides altogether. I'm sure you don't want to see very many more, but we have been doing uh, stuff with the um, one of the winners of the uh, one of the, oh gosh, it's very difficult. Jazakumullah, uh, Sister uh, Harfia, for your patience and for um, soldiering on despite the background noises. Um, thank you for, for sharing the slides as well. Um, perhaps if we could. Uh, proceed um, by viewing the videos of the short listed uh, masjids for this category. Yeah. Um, 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 
Mr. Harfia, could you please announce the winner, please? Jazakumullah. Okay. Um, best green service winner, the mosque winner name. It is my pleasure to announce the British Beacon Mosque Award 2020 for Best Green Initiative is Al Madina Mosque in Barking. Jazakumullah, Sister Harfiya. We're just trying to uh, establish contact with a representative of the Al Madina Masjid in Barking. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Mamid. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Brother Siddiq. Welcome. Uh, many congratulations to you, Barakallahu Fikum. Thank you very much. With us, uh, the secret recipe that you have for being a, a, a leader in this field. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah. I didn't actually get the um, sister's um, um, a video and the presentation, but I assume we won. So Alhamdulillah. The secret recipe, Brother Mahmoud, is a, um, a group of sisters, Alhamdulillah, mothers, daughters, um, and sisters who worked tirelessly uh, over the last year to put together a whole series of workshops over a diverse series of subjects. Um, and one of the benefits of it all was that they connected it all to the Quran and the Sunnah. And in the process, uh, everybody who took part learned absolutely everything about what Islam says to us about our environment, how important it is and how much of a blessing it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what our responsibilities are um, as keepers of that environment to make sure we look after it and see it as a blessing and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he's given us. So on behalf of those sisters, on behalf of al Madinah Masjid, um, I accept this award. Uh, I thank you for the acknowledgement to everybody who's taken part, not only just the finalists, but everybody who's taken part. I encourage you to look at the green issue. Um, it's a responsibility on all of us as human beings. And I, the one thing I'll say to you is that in the process, you will find that your communities have an enormous amount of fun in learning and taking part in this um, arena. And I really, really recommend it to anybody. Anybody who wants to reach out to us and see what we did and for us to help you in any way, shape or form would be more than happy. But once again, on behalf of my sisters who worked tirelessly to make this happen, thank you very much and best luck to everybody. Jazakumullah wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah, Brother Siddiq. And sh thank you for sharing with us the secret recipe of applying Islamic learning underpinned by sincerity, commitment and devotion and solely for seeking the contentment and pleasure of our creator. Jazakumullah uh, and our uh, warm wishes to all the ladies and all the sisters who have been involved and 
many congratulations to all your congregation and Jazakumullah uh, Sister Harfia as well, who bore the technological mishaps that we've had today. It wouldn't be a, a virtual event without having some technological mishaps, uh, but we can only learn from this. Jazakumullah for your patience and your commitment and your sacrifice of time this evening. Jazakumullah, may Allah reward you both. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Moving on now to the next category. This is category number four. And this category is for the most impactful Imam. Uh, we saw the wonderful uh, uh, projects that the most impactful, impactful Alima were undertaking. This is the impactful Im uh, Imam uh, category. And to um, present the award, um, we invite Imam Qari Asim. Imam Qari Asim is a full time lawyer, DLA Piper. Uh, he is the deputy chair of the government's uh, anti-Muslim hatred working group. He has also served as an advisor to the independent review into the application of Sharia law in England and Wales. Of course, alongside this, he is the chair of the Mosque and Imams National Advisory Board, popularly known by the acronym of MINAB, and he is the senior editor and contributor to the Imams online forum. Uh, Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Gari uh, Asim. Um, welcome to the platform, and we look forward to listening to you and your words of wisdom. Salam alaikum, ahlan wa sahlan, marhaban bikum. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Yes, uh, brother. Uh, the the Beacon Mosque Awards is a fantastic opportunity to recognize the hard work of mosque leadership and to celebrate the wonderful achievements of Imams who have contributed to making some of our most truly dynamic and vibrant institutions. And I'd like to thank our respected brother Shokat Varaj and Dr. Chandia for hosting this event uh, as chair of Minab we are proudly associated with Beacon Mosque Awards and we thank the leadership of Beacon Mosque Awards for bringing us together. It was truly inspirational to see so many Imams reaching out in creative ways during the coronavirus pandemic to recognize much needed services to their communities. Imams led on a wide range of initiatives from helping local food banks to delivering shopping to the elderly and those who are shielding, caring for the health and mental well-being of the vulnerable, to, to caring for the environment, supporting the frontline staff, and even offering more space to the NHS. The leadership shown by Imams in holding their communities together and mobilizing them for the good of the wider society highlights the vital role they play in our communities. Imams continue to provide religious and spiritual guidance online to allow people to stay connected with their Lord. Imams selflessly made themselves available to grieve families. We have had many Imams who told us that they were available throughout the night to speak to bereaved families or families who were deeply affected by the coronavirus. The impactful, approachable and motivational Imams and mosque staff, male and female, are valuable assets within our community. Without the daily tireless, positive, visionary and inspirational work of many of these role models, British Muslims would not have been able to accomplish some of the community's goals that we have been able to do so in the last few decades. At Minab, we aim to improve good, good governance and standards of Imams and mosque staff so that the services offered by our mosques are not only wide ranging, but engaging, creative and beneficial to communities across the UK. With these aims in mind, Minab is delighted to support the Beacon Mosque Awards initiative and announce the most impactful Imam this evening. Without doubt, the traditional model of operating mosques has been considerably affected by COVID-19 pandemic. But at the same time, 
the pandemic has presented opportunities for us to reconsider our income streams in our mosques and also our infrastructures, our impact and priorities. The mosque leadership must grasp this opportunity and make space for young people and women in our mosques, as well as our, on our management boards, and invest in our imams, because despite their selfless work, many of our imams are not paid according to uh, their services. Uh, and this investment in the post-COVID-19 era will produce dynamic, vibrant institutions led by our imams. So it gives me great pleasure now to announce the shortlisted and we will watch the videos of the most impactful imam of 2020.
It's my pleasure to announce the British Beacon Mosque Award 2020 for most impactful Imam, Imam Ejaz Shami from Dudley, Birmingham. Many congratulations to Imam Ejaz Shami. MashaAllah, barakallahu feekum. Imam Ejaz, welcome to the platform. Assalamu alaikum, brother Imam Ejaz Ahmad Shami. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the platform, um, dear Imam, and um, please share with us your words of wisdom and many congratulations to you. Barakallah, bismillah, rahman, rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursaleen. First and foremost, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, for this huge achievement. Um, I've actually just arrived back from Medina to Munawwara after performing Umrah, Alhamdulillah, and I thought to myself that, that my visit to Medina Munawwara in itself was a great uh, award from Allah the Almighty. Uh, whilst Muslims around the globe are yearning to visit the blessed lands and I was blessed the opportunity. So I uh, took that as a great uh, reward uh, from Allah the Almighty. And now this tonight, SubhanAllah, I'm actually uh, speechless uh, tonight, no doubt. Uh, well, we have lost connection with Imam Ejaz in his full flow. Hopefully, communication will be re-established. I'm sure the background team is working hard to re-establish commitment with them. Um, perhaps, Gary Asim, may I call upon you to just uh, share a few more words of wisdom. Hopefully, we will get Brother uh, Imam Ejaz back online very, very soon. Alhamdulillah, it's a great honor to actually see so many Imams and um, so many of mosque leadership uh, leading the community such a difficult time during this pandemic and I think now going forward post COVID-19 uh, era there's going to be a hybrid mosque and, uh, Imams online has all has all has been talking about this digital mosque and digital Imams now we need to connect with our communities not just inside the four walls of the mosque but also through online platforms to ensure Jazakumullah, brother Asim. Really? What, a, what a poignant point. We have reconnected online with brother Imam Ejaz once again. And brother Imam. Mashallah, brother Muhammad, apologies to all the viewers as well regarding the connection. I was saying, Alhamdulillah, tonight I feel extremely honored and blessed to be receiving this award. Uh, it's a huge moment of success, not only for myself, uh, but for my parents, my siblings, my children, and my entire Hope family and my wonderful congregation at uh, Netherton Islamic Trust, Abu Masjid. I must say uh, that the real satisfaction for myself and other Aima and other Ustadas is when we physically see the progression and the change in the lives of those that we help from point A to point B. No doubt, this in itself is just priceless. I want to uh, firstly thank all those who voted for me, who recommended me from across the country, and also the respected panel of judges uh, who found my work worthy of this award tonight. So big thank you to all of them. I want to congratulate um, all of the other respected Imams that were shortlisted. No doubt every single one of you are also winners, inshallah. May Allah continue to uh, uh, accept us for the work of the deen and may we continue serving the deen with sincerity and with ikhlas, inshallah. Uh, I also want to thank um, dear brother Shokat Varaj and the entire team at Faith Associates and Beacon Mosque Awards for all the remarkable work that they do, and in particular for recognizing and allowing the British Muslims to celebrate the outstanding work for our Imams that they carry out for the Muslim community and also for the wider community. Lastly, my brothers and sisters, I want to tonight dedicate this award to my honorable father, Allama Hafiz Anayt Ali Saab, who has served the Muslim community of Dudley for the last 40 years. No doubt he is my role model and I am here tonight receiving such a prestigious award due to his motivation and inspiration. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the wasila of his noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, allow us all to continue serving the deen of Islam with ikhlas and with sincere intentions. And again, I just want to thank everybody 
And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us. We are going through very difficult times, challenging times. Uh, we're all in a global pandemic. I make sincere, heartfelt du'as that for those who have lost loved, loved ones to COVID-19 and those that are suffering in hospitals, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of them. And once again, I just want to thank all of you and my very beloved brother Kari, Imam Asim Sahib, Allah ta'ala reward you and bless you. You are an inspiration for all of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all, inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah, Imam Ejaz Ahmad, and many, many congratulations for your Umrah trip. May Allah Rabbul Alameen accept your presence uh, for Umrah and in front of the Rauta. And we request you that you have just returned from Umrah, that you remember us all. Um, and everybody in your dear, in your prayers, in your supplications, uh, and Jazakumullah for your contribution tonight and your words of wisdom and sacrification of your time. Jazakumullah also to Brother Qari Asim, uh, once again, who has uh, shared with us his um, words of wisdom. And Jazakumullah also for stepping in when we had a, a lapse of communication online. Um, Jazakumullah. Um, for that too. Barakallah feekum, inshallah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi oh, wa barakatuh. Jazakallah Okay. Uh, our next category is category number five. This is a service award and this is a the best women's service provided. And to present this award, we invite uh, Dr. Ahmed Makhdoum who is the regional director of the Muslim World League London office. He was formerly the director of the King Fahad Academy and the academic supervisor of the Saudi Arabian Cultural Mission in London. Ahalan wa sahalan, Dr. Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to the platform. The platform is yours. We uh, look forward to listening to you. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, mashallah, tabarakallah. Ahlan wa sahlan bikum. I'm talking from Mecca. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all the team that uh, uh, made any efforts in uh, producing this uh, very precious reward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made all our efforts for his sake only. Alhamdulillah. Uh, this year, uh, I am one of the uh, people who may participate in this, uh, giving this uh, reward. Uh, but the most important thing that uh, I'm going to present the most, uh, the best woman uh, service in, in, in UK. And Alhamdulillah, our history gave us huge examples, great examples for women in Islam that help uh, all the Muslim society uh, his wife uh, Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha uh, Aisha radiallahu anha who has uh, almost half of the teaching of Islam and our history gave us huge example for different uh, people, different women who participate. Uh, anybody can remember his mother, sisters, uh, wife, daughters, they all participate in making your uh, life uh, uh, more beautiful. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, in Muslim World League in London, uh, we, uh, since uh, we began, it's uh, about uh, 1982, there was uh, a part of uh, uh, women helping us in achieving our vision. Uh, our vision in Muslim World League is concentrating on uh, uh, integrating the efforts in three parts, education, introducing the moderation of Islam, and helping and serving the community. Uh, and we have, alhamdulillah, uh, several sisters uh, um, 
uh, and uh, we appreciate their uh, participation in achieving our uh, vision and goals there. Uh, so it's a great time for us and it's a hard time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from this uh, pandemic and we learn a lot and uh, inshallah we'll uh, survive and we will turn uh, better than before. Um, why don't we uh, announce the uh, nominees, the best nominees of this uh, um, reward, which is best woman service in 2020 for the British Bacon Mosque Award. Hello. Mashallah, tabarakallah, mashallah, tabarakallah. Great work from all these uh, nominees. Uh, it's my pleasure now to announce the British Bacon Mosque Award 2020 for the best women service is Ashford and Staines Community Center and Mosque in London. Masha'Allah, Masha'Allah. Jazakumullah, Dr. Ahmed. We are waiting for the representative of the Ashford and Staines Community Centre in London to join us online and perhaps share with us their words of wisdom and their feelings on being the recipient of this award. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Tasneem. Welcome to the Alaykum. platform. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am um, humbled to be accepting this award on behalf of Ashford and Staines Community Center. Jazakallah khairan to everyone who has nominated and voted for us. Alhamdulillah, ma mashallah, tabarakallah, this would not have been possible without the invaluable contributions um, made from everyone who has supported our community center over the years, and especially during these difficult times. Um, this includes our trustees, our imams, the wonderful madrasa teachers, admin staff, and all our amazing uncles and volunteers. Our center recognizes the importance of providing a safe and welcoming environment for sisters of all ages. 
It is for this reason that we have provided so many amazing services, such as our youth group, um, Gems for Jannah, ladies' martial art classes, archery sessions, Quranic Tajweed lessons, and various pick, um, specific seminars. Jazakallah khairan to everyone involved in these wonderful initiatives and who has made it all possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept everyone's humble efforts. I pray that we can continue to service and support our entire community, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakumullah, Sister Tasneem, and many, many congratulations. Um, congratulations to all of the Ashford and Staines Community Center. You are no doubt doing some stellar work. Exactly. So Jazakumullah for sacrificing your time and many congratulations to the whole community there. Jazakumullah also, Brother Dr. Ahmed Makhtoum, for joining us from Makkah al um, we, we implore you that you pray for all of us. Uh, inshallah, in, in the Haram, inshallah, near the Haram. And may Allah guide us all and may Allah accept us all and be happy and content um, with us all, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. As Salaamu alaykum. To both of you, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. An important point, brothers and sisters, that we need to bear in mind. Whilst we acknowledge today the people, uh, we acknowledge today the centers, we acknowledge today the services that are provided by the centers. We also need to remember the unsung heroes, and there are many of them across um, the towns and cities of the UK. And on this occasion, I refer to our business community. Our business community are those who share their hard-earned wealth um, support the masjid, support the projects, support this particular event this night and the awards. And it is their commitment simply to please Allah Azza wa Jal that they contribute to the masjid, whether it's small donations, whether it's large donations, uh, let us uh, say ameen, so may Allah Rabbul Alameen accept the donations of everyone. And today's event, has been supported by part of the business community. The sponsors of the third British Beacon Mosque Awards of 2020 are eight year UWA architects. You no doubt you will have noticed from the slides that have been presented that eight year UWA architects are the sponsors of today's third British Beacon Mosque Awards. Uh, they were founded in 2005. This is a firm of architects with a wide variety of work. This ranges from small to large projects. This includes residential, commercial, cultural, religious, and educational. So we express, or Faith Associates expresses heartfelt jazakumullah and gratitude and thank you for the support it has provided. And Faith Associates would like to share a, a small uh, video with regard to this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear brothers and sisters. We would like to introduce you to our firm, Atelier UWA. We're a firm of architects based in East London and we work nationwide. We are specialist architects in community projects, including mosques, community centers, and schools. We take projects from inception, design to completion, and work for you and with you at all stages in between, including planning stage, technical design, building regulations, tender and construction stages. The images shown depict some of our projects. Some key features within our designs include attention to design and construction detail, listening to our clients' needs, future-proofing to ensure the mosques and other buildings we design have facilities relevant to all members of the community. These wide-ranging facilities within our religious buildings help to serve all from the cradle to the grave. This inclusive, energy-efficient and resource-conscious approach is after all at the heart of our faith and it needs to be central to how we design and what we build. Our mosques should be inspirational 
from the moment you set foot inside. Sustainable, design-driven inside and out, and capable of serving the current and many future generations to come. Without obligation, we offer a one-day free consultation to discuss your project. If you would like further information about the work we do, please feel free to visit our website, www.atelieruwa.com. Thank you. Jazakumullah, very insightful and very inspiring about the masjids of, of the future, inshallah. Uh, Atelier UWA Architects and Jazakumullah to all our business communities, all those who support, uh, irrespective of the amount, support the masjids, its projects, its people. And no doubt you are also worthy to be mentioned tonight. And may Allah Rabbul Alameen accept your efforts and your contributions. May He bless you more in your uh, earnings as well. Our next award is category six. This is for the best COVID response. As we all know, this has been an unusual year and unusual challenges. The Ummah has always stood up and faced to those challenges, irrespective of the nature of that challenge. And this year, we have seen some unique responses across the Muslim community in facing up to the COVID uh, pandemic and communities across uh, the nation have provided stellar beacon uh, projects that we can all learn from. Who better should I introduce to provide an, um, an informed critical insight into what the work of the nation has been within MOS to respond to the COVID than, of course, the CEO of Brother Shokat, who firsthand visited many places across the nation and has an informed critical insight into the stellar work of the nation's masjid and people in response to COVID-19. Brother Shokat, once again, Salaam Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Wa Alaikum Salaam Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Sheikh Mahmoud Chandia, uh, thank you so much for that kind introduction and thank you for uh, handling this so well. I mean, uh, this is the first time being uh, doing this award online. It's a technological potential minefield and I think Alhamdulillah we with the exception of uh, uh, the Green Award it's been going smoothly and I thank you and the team in the background that's putting this together. Actually this uh, again I actually wasn't supposed to be doing this award but our uh, particular awardee uh, has had a bit of a technical challenge so I'm coming on on her behalf uh, who was a Conservative Party chairwoman but I will try my best to kind of just talk about uh, this very, very important uh, award. This is a new, a new award that we've put together for this year, the Masjid's COVID response. And let me say this, that uh, SubhanAllah, the, uh, when we put this together uh, back in July, uh, it was because when we saw the breakdown, uh, the lockdown, sorry, starting from March, SubhanAllah, the masjids, these, some of the best masjids in the UK took its responsibility to save and support humanity very seriously. We saw from uh, Dundee all the way down to Portsmouth, Plymouth, all the way into Kent. Masajids basically saying we were locked down, we can't do Salah, we can't do Jummah, we can't do many of the activities that masjids are doing, but they started to open up food banks, they started to open up soup kitchens, they started to open up their facilities for the uh, homeless and the destitute and subhanAllah. The masjid became, in some cases, the right arms of the local authorities. I saw with my own eyes, masajids uh, were becoming partners with local authorities to distribute food, distribute the welfare that the local authorities couldn't distribute. They didn't have the networks, they didn't have the manpower, they didn't have the, the local knowledge in some cases, especially they didn't have the knowledge of where the problems were in the community and masjid stepped up. The masjids uh, provided such a phenomenal support. I think when history is written, when history is written about the work that this community, the Muslim British community did, during this, this once-in-a-lifetime pandemic, 
they will have to bear witness that the Muslim community first followed the instructions of the government. It didn't break any laws. If you saw the details and the reports that come out where infections have been spread, there is no message at all. No evidence that masjids were spreading or madrasas were spreading uh, infections. SubhanAllah, the masjids have been exemplary. Imams have been exemplary. They were at the forefront giving out messages, communicating through their networks about how to uh, conduct themselves and how to conduct the community, how the community should conduct itself. And thirdly, mosque leaders, I, I must confess, mosque leaders who do not get paid, 99.9% um, .9 of the trustees, 100% of trustees, obviously, they do not get paid, it's against the law, was sacrificing day and night, I saw with my own eyes, even when they should have been isolating, remaining indoors, uh, and remaining uh, you know, within the confines of their four walls at home, they were still engaged and sacrificing and, and pushing the community to donate and to work uh, to support the communities, Muslim as well as not Muslim. And these uh, people that have been shortlisted, I mean, this was one of the toughest categories. And I must say from the, from the beginning here, I have not chosen this. This is by the wonderful panel, Sheikh Babika, Sister Sahar, Sister Salia, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Chandia, uh, and Brother um, Yasin. These five people had to analyze the detail, the, the packs that they were sent about each of these five massages. And if I may say, we have Shah Jahan, the, the first purpose built mosque in the UK. They, they did such a wonderful job that even the royal family sent a delegation to go and start packing bags from the masjid. Amazing. Greenland Masjid, uh, one of the Beacon Mosques from last year, they actually set the, set the standards. The, the, some of their uh, burial strategies and looking after the families of the bereaved, wonderful. Al Falah, uh, a new masjid that's come into the Beacon Mosque arena. When we saw their work, unbelievable work. Incredible level of community spirit and the volunteers there showed fantastic uh, initiatives. Finsbury Park Mosque, one of London's biggest mosques in one of the most challenging environments of London. Again, I must confess that their leadership, especially uh, uh, Brother uh, brother Cosba, doing a fantastic job there, especially helping the NHS. And we know one of the, not just Beacon Mosques in the UK, but Beacon Mosques in Europe, the East London Mosque, doing amazing work. So I will stop talking and I'll ask the brothers to get the video ready, if I may. But I just wanted to just quickly fill in what uh, these masajids did. Sometimes the pictures don't demonstrate that enough. But we know that these five shortlisted winners, and they're all winners, as Ijaz Shami said, everyone that has been shortlisted are winners. It's very difficult decision. I know that the panel found this very difficult to judge. But the, these people have made immense contributions during this difficult time. Without any further ado, these are the five shortlisted winners.
Ashara, it's with the greatest honor and pleasure that I announced that the Beacon Mosque 2020 award for the best COVID response is Greenland Mosque in Birmingham. Congratulations, mashallah. Well done to the Greenland Mosque in Birmingham. I know it's one of the most uh, active mosques and one of the biggest institutions in Birmingham. And if their, if their leadership is here, uh, congratulations. Over to you, Dr. Mahmoud. Jazakumullah, Brother Shokat, once again for your wonderful sharing of your thoughts and your experiences um, as you undertook that uh, task during the past year. We welcome the representative of Green Lane Masjid. Many congratulations to you. Ahlan, sahlan, marhaban, mikum. Salaamu alaykum, Brother are you? Are you with us? Assalamu alaikum. Well, salam, brother. Many congratulations, brother. Assalamu alaikum. Barakallahu feekum. We look forward to listening to you. So first, I'd like to start by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because without him, none of this work would have been possible. And also, it's an honor to be nominated for this particular category. And as I was reflecting on all the work that we had done over the past year, I started to realize, as Brother Shokat mentioned, that many masajid and many Islamic communities across the country uh, had taken it upon themselves uh, to take part in this, in this great work. And it led me to come to a reflection on two particular points. Number one is Muslims genuinely care. And as soon as the pandemic was upon us, everyone started to mobilize and Muslim communities rose to the challenge and they genuinely served. And one particular point that resonated with me that Brother Shokat mentioned is that this will now be written in the history books, that the Muslim contribution throughout this COVID-19 period in all the documentaries, inshallah, that are going to be produced, the Muslim response will be there. And nobody did this for the awards, for the recognition. It was the fact that our deen no matter where we come from, teaches us to genuinely care. And alhamdulillah, we proved that. And the second point is thinking about the future. And it shows that masajid are not self-serving anymore. We've gone beyond that. And COVID-19 forced masajid to learn and train and learn how to produce these services to meet the urgent need that, was, that they found themselves in. But our youth, our sisters, all the other neglected parts of our communities, their need is also urgent. And inshallah, if we produce this for COVID-19, then let's bring on 2021, inshallah, and let's get some youth services up and running, and let's get some sister services up and running, uh, and let's start to continue to serve our communities. Jazakallah khair. Jazakumullah, Brother Humayu, and many congratulations to you and the whole of your community there in Birmingham in Green Lane Masjid. Exceptional work, and hopefully you'll be able to share your experiences and of the great work that you have been doing. Jazakumullah to Brother Shokat as well for joining us at the last minute. Um, Jazakumullah to both of you for your time and commitment, and please enjoy the rest of the evening. Moving on now to our Next category, category number seven. This is for the best El elderly service category award. And to present the award for this category, the best elderly service, um, I call upon Brother Afzal Khan. Brother Afzal Khan is a British Labour Party politician who has been the member of parliament for the Manchester Gorton constituency since June of 2017. Before this, he has been a Lord Mayor of Manchester for the year 2005 and 2006. He has also served as the member of the European Parliament for the Northwest of England from 2014 to 2017. So we are honored to have with us today, Brother Afzal Khan, MP, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Brother Abzal. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Dr. Mahmoud Saab. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. It's lovely to see you looking young as ever. 
الحمد لله الحمد لله كان هاي فاست اوف اول سي ثانك يو فيري ماتش فور انفايتنج مي تو جيف ذس اوورد اند ماي اي اولسو ثانك ذا فيث اسوسييت فور ذا ثيرد كونسيكتيف يير ذات ذي ار جيفينج ذس اوورد وي جاست هاد اوردز فور كفر 19 This truly has been a very difficult year, I would say, for the whole world. It, in a way, has turned the world upside down. Nobody expected this. And I think one of the lessons for me personally is the mighty power of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. How this invisible virus has been able to stand still uh, the whole uh, uh, the whole uh, world. Uh, and yes it's been difficult but i think the faith community has really shown out uh, different faith communities have definitely have been involved in helping out as a member of parliament i've seen this with my own eyes but i would say the mosque certainly have done a tremendous job uh, in order to make that difference for the society as a whole and to cope with this huge huge change uh, that has taken place uh the appg british muslims are also doing a report which will be coming out soon uh looking at this uh, tremendous contribution of the muslim community and again uh you know there may be others talking about the far right and how muslim ought to be blamed the reality on the ground is whether you want to look at the doctors as you want to look at the businesses communities mosques you see the contribution that the muslim community have made and tonight we're seeing that again a huge contribution which is taking place in manchester you know i've seen this i've been engaged with this as well helping the homeless the food banks the hot meals the giving warm clothes even giving you know free hand gels uh, masks uh, checking up on vulnerable people giving a financial emotional support so so much work actually has been done this solidarity of the community which has been shown uh yeah, really it's been a uh, huge 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 uh, achievement as well and in that sense i i think it's important that we do actually hold these awards despite our difficulties and these are being done now on the zoom uh using the internet system uh but we've seen actually how much uh, participation you have had uh for more than 500 nominations and 11 categories that you're going through tonight Uh, and the 40,000 plus people who actually participate in costing their votes shows actually the interest as well in this whole subject. But for me, this whole idea of a beacon mosques uh, is actually very important for the community. It's of course first of its kind. It's a great idea, really lifting the work of our community, developing them, helping them to achieve, helping them to reach out to the wider community. and of course this work we've seen how it's accelerated it's gone national and up i would say even international helping the mosques actually to work the excellence uh helping of course the Muslim community to excel in this direction is the key in the heart of this work that the shoker and the team are doing uh but for me i suppose uh, the key other hard point key point is benefiting of the uh, Uh, is the key idea of islam as well benefiting others making the life of others better as well and this is uh, something we've seen from the teaching of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the best among humanity are those who bring benefit to others uh, is something which helped me to work in the political field i would say and the second thing which i also get inspired which i think is also part of the beacon the mosque idea as well the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a person whose two days are the same is in state of loss so striving and making sure you don't waste time trying to improve trying for excellence is actually the teaching of islam and this is what we should all be doing so uh, we know of course the mosque is at the heart of the community and if i can say this to your viewers you know i am an individual who is a product of the mosques in britain uh, i learned my not only my deen but through my deen going into politics actually when the imams helped me and taught me the need for serving the humanity being involved is what then helped me to achieve what you introduced you know not only as a councillor as a lord mayor as a member of european parliament i managed to defeat the griffin whose message was of eight and then member of parliament and the shadow deputy leader of the house at the moment so all these things were done 
product of the mosque. So that is the potential the mosque has. So all those of your viewers, those who are engaged with the mosque activities, they must understand this important work that they are doing and how they can develop this in leadership coming out of these mosques. So thank you very much. I would, would like to say to everyone who has been involved with the whole COVID-19 issue as well, but also here tonight. And I do want to take this opportunity to congratulate all those wonderful people actually who have made a difference to other people's lives. So let us now move to the awards and it's my pleasure to announce that the shortlisted mosques for this awards are So it is my pleasure to announce the British Beacon Mosques Award 2020 for the best elderly service is Glasgow Central Mosque. Mashallah, mashallah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Nafis from Glasgow. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Many congratulations, so, Brother Nafis. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah accept your efforts and the community's effort in Glasgow. We look forward to listening to you. Jazakallah. Um, so on behalf of uh, Glasgow Central Mosque, I would like to um, accept this award. Um, surely all the other places, they were also deserving of this award. So I would like to thank the panel uh, for choosing Glasgow Central and recognizing our efforts. The true credit, it goes to, you know, all the staff and the volunteers, the staff who go over and above to provide the services to the elderly and the volunteers who selflessly commit themselves to the cause as well. Um, the elderly in the community, they are the ones who have got the community where it, to where it is. So it only, um, you know, it only befits them that we serve them in the best way that we can. Um, you know, we always joke that some of the kind of elderly members of the uh, of the committee, they are also old enough to be qualified to be users of the elderly service themselves. And sometimes you'll find them joining in. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a great community feeling. It's great to get them into the masjid. They enjoy coming into the masjid somewhere that they feel that they have a spiritual connection, not just a personal connection with other people. And, you know, they can pray their salah and, and they get looked after. Um, so I think, again, credit goes to all the staff members, uh, the members of the management team that make it happen. I would like to thank the, the, you know, the team behind the award ceremony for giving the recognition, the, the panel. Uh, Jazakallah khair. Jazakumullah khair and many congratulations to you and the old community in Glasgow once again. 
and Jazakumullah to you as well, Brother Afzal Khan. Nice to see you once again. May Allah bless you both and Jazakumullah for your commitment, sacrifice of time this evening. Um, many, many uh, congratulations. Jazakumullah to you both. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our next category is category number eight. And category number eight is the best madrasa service. This category award will be presented by Dr. Amjad Parwais. Dr. Amjad Parwais is a CEO of Seafresh. He's an advisor to the NHS, local government uh, issues on economic development. He, is, he has also developed uh, education projects in the UK and he is a lead in advising the government on educational services as well. He has a long CV and he is also a non-executive director of the Bradford Teaching Hospitals. Um, I welcome, I extend a warm welcome to you, Dr. Amjad Parwais. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as salam uh, to everyone. Uh, my, first of all, uh, heartfelt congratulations to Faith Associates uh, for their British uh, Beacon uh, Mosque uh, Awards uh, 2020. Uh, I suppose uh, when uh, you get to my age, I'm now 62, uh, you begin to wonder uh, about the awe of the Islamic uh, civilization at its peak. Uh, and I don't think I've ever met uh, anybody who, who's a Muslim, whether they're young uh, or old, uh, who doesn't aspire uh, uh, to, to take the Muslim community to the, those heights. Uh, there is one thing to have uh, the aspirations uh, to reach uh, those lofty heights, uh, but I believe uh, there needs to be a, a, a fundamental shift uh, in our strategic thinking uh, in order to get to uh, our desired uh, visions. Uh, and for me, uh, like Brother Afzal said earlier on, that he's a product uh, of the masjid. Uh, I think uh, most people are a product of our masjid, uh, but I think we need to move to uh, a system uh, where the masjid actually become the central pivot, uh, what I call the uh, ecosystem of human capital development. So if we look at uh, the history of Islam and when we were at ascendancy, there are three key pillars for me uh, that made that ascendancy absolutely possible. Of course, uh, you know, the, the, the message, uh, the values of Islam uh, are, are the centrality. But what are the sub uh, sectors? What are the, the three key pillars uh, which actually made sure uh, that that ascendancy happened? And inshallah, I believe that it can happen again. The first, uh, I believe, uh, if, if you look across the globe, uh, humanity uh, is in tatters in terms of political systems that breed inequality and injustice. You, you, you've only got to look across the globe. Uh, and I, I feel uh, that apart from teaching uh, the vital aspects of uh, our religion, uh, we must uh, get our youngsters, particularly right from the primary school age uh, to university and thereafter, uh, to understand uh, law, not just this application in courts, uh, but in terms of how equality and justice can be applied uh, to, to today's miserable state of affairs. So that's the pillar number one uh, that you know this vision uh, of ascendancy has. Now the second part uh, uh, of this vision uh, looks at uh, empowering the finances. Uh, without finances, uh, we can dream. Uh, resource is something that we must have. So if we look at the golden history, uh, the, the Sahaba 
uh, were some of the most resourceful and most entrepreneurial uh, people uh, that lived uh, on this earth. And indeed, Islam, uh, uh, in my uh, estimation, uh, spread more uh, with the Islamic traders than you know, what the Western uh, historian would have you believe that Islam was spread by the sword. So understanding the finances in their equity of equality. So if you look at the capitalist system at the moment, which is utterly unstable, it, it gives us the current depression of 2008. So every four to seven years, we have you know, huge ups and downs where millions of people across the globe are made unemployed. And if you look at the system, I mean, I've been absolutely listening uh, I've been mesmerized by the work some of our Muslim colleagues, uh, businesses, mosques have been doing up and down the country in terms of their generosity. But, you know, despite the two families working together, I, it used to be the husband first who just did the work. Now, even the women are going out to work and still they can't make ends meet. Uh, and, and the family uh, structure and the value system is literally being thrown in the bin for sake of you know wannabe materialism and greed uh, of this system. So we need uh, the time is now. We need to actually teach the world the equity of financial systems and the fairness uh, that they create. And again, this needs to be brought in to the masajid uh, and to the madrasas. So we need a total revision. Uh, of this ecosystem uh, uh, of enterprise. And lastly, uh, there's a huge debate currently about fake news and mass media. I think Islam uh, in its infancy, in its maturity, and even uh, at the current state of affairs, uh, communication is something that upholds truth, transparency, and accountability. And across the globe, this state of affairs where you've got totally the opposite, the world and the humanity is actually crying out for this. Uh, so I am absolutely delighted tonight to present this, uh, what I call the ecosystem of human capital development and which uh, Alama Iqbal uh, rightly says, uh, we need to develop the hudi, the inner self that speaks to you Right, that connects with your fitrat, that takes us to Ashraf al uh, It is a tall order uh, to aim for, but I think we Muslims have never uh, been afraid of being audacious uh, in our dreams, because if you don't dream, you do not actually arrive at your destination. So I'm absolutely delighted tonight to be here, uh, to be presenting uh, one of the fabulous awards uh, uh, to, uh, to the uh, to the shortlisted. Uh, so I suppose uh, it's over to you to show the slides uh, for the best beacon mosque awards for the best uh, madrasa service.
Okay, uh, so it is uh, my pleasure indeed to announce the Best Beacon Mosque Award 2020 for the Best Madrasa Service is Lantern Academy in Rochdale. Congratulations, guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Brother Muhammad Shahid from Rochdale. Welcome to the platform and many congratulations to you. We look forward to listening to you, Brother Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, can you see me? We certainly can. Alhamdulillah, Jazakallah, guys. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Shahid. I am the head of education here at the Lantern Academy. Alhamdulillah, it's a great honor and privilege to receive the Best Madras of 2020 award. A huge thank you to all of our supporters who nominated and voted for us, and of course, Beacons of Mosque for awarding Lantern Academy. Uh, Lantern Academy, we're based in Rochdale. Our academy is a branch of the Golden Mosque in Rochdale, the first mosque established in Rochdale in 1963. This award I'd like to dedicate to all of my hardworking team who spent countless hours in serving the next generation of Rochdale. Also, our hardworking students who complete the Lantern family, alhamdulillah, making it a warm, welcoming and humbling atmosphere here at Lantern Academy. As you're aware, with COVID-19, uh, the mosques have been closed. Our academy, we have been teaching online for several months, so the atmosphere at our academy was not the same at all with our students, alhamdulillah. The presence of our young beacons of light was dearly missed, but now it's great to have them back, and they will be thrilled to have won the award. Many of them, subhanAllah, have been asking me for weeks about the award, and I'm sure they're watching right now, and they will be thrilled. So majority of our, uh, our team here at Lantern Academy, they have the daytime careers, they have their families as well. And yet they still spare a large portion of their time to educate and nurture our next generation. And as always, they strive to improve our academy, making Lantern Academy what it is today, alhamdulillah. It's a privilege and it's also a little bit scary as well, to be honest, uh, working alongside a number of our teachers who are our ex-students as well. Similarly, myself, during the day, I teach at a local primary school, and by evening, I'm managing Lantern Academy. This winter, alhamdulillah, it's been a decade since I've been serving Lantern Academy as the head, and it's heartwarming seeing the changes we have come through over the years in order to achieve what we have today in Lantern Academy. Alhamdulillah, over 300 students who we serve from across the borough of Rochdale. By gaining this award, I think this is the best way of celebrating my 10th year here at Lantern Academy, alhamdulillah. We aim to continue to strive in making our academy the best it can be for our next generation, inshallah. Once again, thank you very much to all. Thank you for recognizing our outstanding work that our team here at Lantern Academy carry out in Rochdale. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakumullah, Brother Muhammad, and many, many congratulations to you and the Academy oh, and all the community there. We wish you the very best. May Allah accept your efforts to serve Amen. the next generation. Also, may I take this opportunity to extend my warmest well wishes to Dr. Amjad Barwes. Jazakallah for stepping in and awarding this award and many, many um, Jazakallah to you, much Jazakallah to you for sharing your vision and your insights into history, both past and recent, some very interesting thoughts. Jazakallah to you both. I bid you farewell uh, with the greetings of Islam and may Allah Rabbul Alameen accept your sacrifice of time this evening. Jazakallah for your support and Barakat. congratulations to you again, Brother Muhammad. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, brothers and sisters, we now have just three more awards. We're on category nine. Category nine is for the best outreach service. And may I invite uh, to present this award, Brother Zulfikar Ali Karim. Brother Zulfikar is the current president of the Bradford Council for Mosques. Uh, he's a former marketing professional. Brother Zulfikar has overseen various initiatives and services in West Yorkshire, uh, benefiting the community there. Brother Zulfikar is listed as one of the 100 most influential people in Yorkshire by the Insider magazine. He was the winner of the Muslim News Award for Excellence in Community Service and also received the Telegraph and 
August Community Awards for his work to save Bradford's last remaining Jewish synagogue from closure. So welcome to the platform, Brother Zulfikar Karim. Brother Zulfikar, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you can see and hear me. We certainly can. Thank you very much. Um, Chair, thank you very much for that uh, introduction. Um, also great to see uh, Dr. Amjad uh, also from Bradford. It seems like the North has uh, got quite a representation here tonight for which we are delighted. Uh, maybe if this event had a have been hosted in London, we may not have all been able to uh, attend. And I think the virtual event makes this uh, even more accessible for, for the rest of us who uh, were up and down the country. So Jazakallah, um, thank you for the, for the opportunity. Um, a real honor and, and privilege really to be amongst uh, the esteemed tonight, not just uh, of your presenters, your speakers, your self chair, but also the recipients um, of this award. So um, I'm, I'm absolutely humbled uh, to be a part of uh, this amazing uh, lineup this evening. Um, so before I go into um, presenting uh, the award, um, I'd like to really share my experience, if I may, uh, Chair, of um, this year's COVID and as the president of the Council for Mosque in Bradford, where one of the first established uh, Council for Mosques, uh, we will be, inshallah, celebrating 40 years next year. Um, and uh, we really have come a long way in that, in that time as a community. Um, but just taking you back to March uh, this year, we will all um, be, be aware when this COVID came on the scene, I myself, um, in the daytime, I work in the NHS, so I was aware of COVID and the work behind the scenes in uh, in January, um, and we started to plan uh, for the virus back then. But I don't think anybody really fully understood uh, the full extent and the impact this was going to have. And I remember uh, mid March when I came down to to London uh, to visit the green, um, uh, the Garden of Peace Cemetery with Brother Omar. And um, at that time, we were both making preparations uh, for burials and deaths from COVID. And we can tell you that it was very, very um, um, difficult uh, to listen to some of the scientists at the time and the impact this virus was likely to have on our communities in particular. And straight after that, we then became aware that the lockdown was definitely going to affect our place of worship, and in particular our masjids. And let me tell you, when you sit down with 120 masajids, uh, imams, um, and, and our community elders, it's not an easy conversation to have with your community um, when you are talking about suspending um, uh, congregational prayers uh, and also put in uh, closure on our mosques and madrasas. In my lifetime, it's probably one of the most difficult conversations I've ever needed to have. Um, it was on that day of 18th of uh, March um, in, in Bradford at one of our community centers. And I remember one of our muftis um, um, sitting with us, uh, with our GPs, um, as well as uh, Dr. Saab from Bima, uh, who you will all know, um, talking about what is the uh, Muslim view on COVID and the closing of masjids. And it was then that I realized the significance and importance of a network of masjids, imams, and, and, and the medical fraternity from within the Muslim community. And within a matter of days, I would say within 72 hours, there was a network of council for mosques established up and down the country. 
uh, with imams and scholars and medics coming together and advising people like myself and others on what was going to be the impact on masjids and how best we handled the situation, which was very, very fluid at the time. What was also going on that the government were making decisions really with real without much time to consult with the communities and very quickly the uh, the British Institute um, was set up with, uh, with with Dr Asim over there as well and I want to really use this opportunity chair if I may to pay respect to the institutions like the MCB and Minab and Bima who have from day one really come together in making sure that the Muslim community were represented at the cabinet and through MHCLG and through <coughs> sciences to make sure the right decision was made and also making sure that the voice of Muslim community was heard. So this year for me, I think we have really um, raised the bar when it comes to representation up and down the country. And I firsthand have witnessed the great work that's gone on behind the scene by all the large institutions, Alhamdulillah, this year that have represented the Muslim community. And it's for that reason that we are able to serve our masjids and make our masjids what they are today. The next uh, kind of piece of, um, tribute I'd like to pay in particular is to Faith Associates. In June, we in Bradford have over 120 mosques and madrasas. And Dr. Saab, when I was asked by the public health team in Bradford to sit down with them and to go through their COVID safe policy for mosques and madrasas, let me tell you, it was a very, very daunting task to say how are we going to make sure our mosques are COVID safe and are going to be ready for the opening on 3rd of July. And it was very difficult because the public health team were very, very busy and they were not able to offer us that third hand experience and service and said to the likes of the Council for Mosques that it's over to you guys and to your masjids to make sure that like businesses you are COVID ready. And you know, and I know that not every masjid in the UK is a beacon mosque. That is what we aspire to be. And inshallah, with the work that's going on, one day every masjid in the UK, a madrasa will be a beacon mosque or madrasa. But until then, we have a journey to travel. And that journey for me was only possible with Brother Shokat Varaj. And I actually put a call into him and I said, look, Shokat Bhai, I've got over 120 mosques that I need to prepare for opening. And I'm not sure whether we as masjids have got the facility and the manpower and the expertise and the knowledge to do that. And the last thing we want is for the pandemic to spread in our masjids and our community to suffer even more so than what they've already suffered. And let me tell you, Shokat Bhai, within three days, put a team of first class people on the ground in Bradford. And we, in the time that it was on the ground for the month, we went through 60 masjids that were risk assessed, that were provided training and PPE in readiness for the opening on 7th, uh, sorry, on 3rd of July. And Above that, there was 50 masjid, madrasas as well that we had to make sure were ready for the opening as well. So really, from myself and the trustees of masjids um, up and down the country, but in particular Bradford, to understand the legal implications of the legislation that was being put through Parliament was also very, very difficult. Um, and I think... It's only with organizations like the ones I've mentioned and particular faith associates that our institutions will become the catalyst for social change. And I think if we're all looking at 2021 and what does that bring, 
I think that brings, inshallah, a massive opportunity for the Muslim community to use our masjids as actually the catalyst for social change, to do more than just the five daily prayers and the madrasas. So on that, uh, Chair, I will uh, finish my, my vote of thanks to yourself and, and, and also to uh, the Beacon Mosque for this wonderful um, scheme that they've been running for, third, for the third year now. And uh, inshallah, um, I, I wish him uh, continued uh, success. Um, may I now hand over um, to yourself and the technical team who have done a fantastic job to announce the shortlist. Jazakumullah. Back to you, Brother Zulfikar. Okay, so that pause uh, chair was me opening uh, my envelope in a true award fashion. And uh, to say that it's my pleasure to announce the British Beacon Moscow Award 2020 for the best outreach service, and that is Masjid Al Falah in Birmingham. MashaAllah. To many congratulations to Masjid Al Falah. We await the arrival on platform uh, for the representative of Masjid Al Falah, Birmingham. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother. Wa alaikum salam, brother. Uh, Dr. Chandir, this is Adil. Can you hear me? I certainly can hear you. We can view, view you as well. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all the viewers, uh, to you, Dr. Chandia, and all the panel as well. Um, alhamdulillah, um, it is only with the blessing of Allah. Uh, the du'as and the efforts of all our volunteers, our, our donors who have contributed towards uh, the recognition uh, of our humble, humble efforts. Uh, for us to be counted in the company of um, such esteemed organizations means a lot to our community, our organization. Uh, and these are the mosques that we've actually looked up to with, with great awe and respect over the years. Uh, as you know, Dr. Chandi, you have, you've been to us in the initial stages of our masjid. We are a, a community-based um, masjid in Birmingham. And our aim has always been to be the heart of solutions for our community. And as Dr. Graham said a while ago, that it is a community that stepped up during this pandemic 
and it's provided testament for the great strength and unity that we have within ourselves, really. So I'm, I'm accept, accepting this award on behalf of an absolutely amazing and passionate team of hard grafting volunteers that have worked tirelessly, really tirelessly to deliver all our initiatives that have touched the heart uh, of our community. And um, Chandia and um, Sakarim, passion is a word that is synonymous with the efforts that we as a team carry out. It's really difficult, I can't single out any individual, but after Allah, I would like to thank all our volunteers, supporters, donors, partners that we have worked with, and internally along with our ulema, the management team, the trustees, and really every single member of our association who has stood with us uh, during this testing time. So truly, um, Allah and his messenger, um, peace be upon him, has given us guidance to, to help, to give, to support others. Uh, and we as a team have strived to do this over the last five years. And it has culminated today in this kind of recognition. And may Allah accept uh, our efforts and the efforts made by all the other organizations throughout the country. Uh, I just wanted to say a big jazakallah khair to yourself, to Chandia, uh, Brother Shokat, who has actually given us a, a roadmap to aspire to us. And with those little words, I just wanted to say jazakallah uh, khair again, and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah to you both, um, Brother Zulfikar and our representative from Masjid al-Fala. Um, many, many congratulations. May Allah accept your uh, commitment Amen. and your sacrifice of time. And please convey our congratulations to all the community of Masjid Fala. Jazakumullah to you as well, Brother Zulfikar Karim. Very interesting thoughts. Um, and obviously, I am aware that the Bradford Council is doing some excellent work. And may Allah Rabbul Alameen accept the efforts of all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum Moving on to our penultimate category, which is category number 10. This award is for the best youth service. And may I invite uh, to the platform to present this award, uh, Baron uh, Patel, uh, Baron Kamlesh Kumar Patel, uh, or Lord Patel of Bradford, uh, is a member of the House of Lords, um, appointed uh, as an OBE, Order of the British Empire in the 1999 honors list. He was made a life peer with the title of Baron Patel of Bradford in 2006. He is also, I am aware, passionate about cricket. And in, Lord Patel is also a senior independent director of the English and Wales Cricket Board, or ECB. And he was appointed in that post in 2016. Uh, I welcome Lord uh, Patel uh, to the platform. Uh, good evening, Lord Patel. Whilst we are establishing communications with uh, Lord Patel, uh, may I also, uh, Lord Patel, first of all, uh, my apologies for the delay and thank you very much for your patience uh, for this uh, delay in uh, establishing communication with you and the wait you have had to endure whilst we have come to your category. But we look forward to listening to your, your views and your comments and your observations. Uh, we welcome you to the platform, Lord Patel. Uh, salams. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope you're all safe and well, wherever you are. Uh, thank you for the very kind introduction, Dr. Mahmoud. It, it's so nice to see you again after so many years. Uh, I must say you're doing a phenomenal job this evening. I know you're running a little bit late, so I'll keep my comments brief. Um, I'm sorry, but it looks like I'm the third Bradfordian uh, to announce award, an award this evening. Uh, following my two dear friends, Amjad and Zulfika, clearly you've heard two people who've done so much for our communities in Bradford. Um, I, I would like to just use this opportunity to say particular thanks uh, to Brother Shokat, the CEO of Faith Associates, for inviting me. Uh, an inspirational leader is someone who I have had the opportunity uh, and pleasure of working with <clears throat> on a number of occasions. Um, I'm truly honoured and privileged to be asked this evening to present 
uh, the 2020 award for the best youth service. I'm sure it would have been an even richer experience had we been all able to be together in London or wherever uh, in person. That would have been great. Clearly not possible, but inshallah, hopefully next year. 2020 is certainly a year that none of us will ever forget. It has brought hardship, challenges, uh, and loss beyond our imagination. Um, but at the same time, 2020 has also brought out the best of humanity, and we've seen much of it this evening. Millions of people volunteering, helping others less fortunate than themselves, regardless of anyone's background, um, ethnicity or faith. For many young people, particularly in our society, 2020 has had a significant impact from affecting their education, uh, missed opportunities to take up new employment. It's impacted their ability to develop as young citizens and grow into confident and healthy adults. As you know, I've spent many, many years working to engage young people in all sorts of different settings in health and social care, in sports, in, you know, in extremism work. And all of the work has been extremely rewarding and I've learned so much from them. I've seen firsthand the huge untapped talents and qualities within our young people. And, and as you mentioned, I'm a passionate cricketer. So one of the most rewarding uh, projects was during my five years working with English and Wales Cricket Board, where we developed a, a program of work to engage and display the amazing cricketing talents of our young boys and girls and young men and women. There's no doubt in my mind that sport, especially cricket, can help us to connect with different people, build confidence and skills, but most importantly, has the potential to keep everyone, young and old, male and female, physically active, which is so important in improving people's health and well-being. And it's so important at a time like we've had at the moment. And of course, it's in our blood. It's just great fun. Young people are the world's future. They have risen to the challenges that 2020 has thrown up. That's why this award for me is so important. This category looked at MOS that have developed programs on or facilities for young people under the age of 18. In the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, MOS were assessed to see how they adapted and continued to provide support to young people in their community. Most importantly, what programs they had in place post lockdown. Because we must remember, you know, COVID-19 will end. We will come through this well and we'll be uh, richer for it. For me, all the people shortlisted tonight are all winners. Um, this is, was a very important category with lots of competition. So you've all done remarkably well to be shortlisted. Um, so let's see those who have been shortlisted in action. Thank you.
Wow, clearly we can see why they were all winners. Um, the magic envelope as it was. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to announce the winner of the British Beacon Moscow War 2020 for the best youth service, Gustav Hayes Muslim Centre in London. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much, Lord Patel. Hayes Muslim Centre, we await a representative of the centre to join us on the platform. Congratulations to you, uh, Hayes Muslim Centre of London. Uh, we hope we will be able to uh, listen to the uh, wise words of your representative uh, online. So we look forward to uh, hosting you online and establishing communications. Thank you very much, Brother Tahir, for joining us from the Hayes Muslim Centre. Many congratulations. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Brother Tahir. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can you see and hear me? We certainly can. <laughs> certainly, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, really, this is an honor and, and a surprise indeed uh, that the Taiz Muslim Center uh, has, has won the Youth uh, Service Award. I remember about, um, about um, uh, three years ago, we won the uh, award for the best service to the elderly. Uh, when we took them out for golfing and other facilities and well-being classes. So we've come a full circle in many ways and now obviously tapped into the youth. Uh, we've always been very passionate uh, uh, about uh, youth activities within our, our, our four walls. Uh, but apart from providing a lot of the other services, this year has been uh, more notable, particularly, you know, I think Lord Patel will be uh, very pleased with this, that we managed to foster uh, a relationship with uh, ECB uh, all stars scheme, which they are trying to filter through to uh, various communities. And of course, with the COVID-19 restrictions, it was uh, uh, ideal opportunity uh, to bring that within our four walls because the facilities outside uh, were rather limited um, and the closure of the schools and various things, it was good to see uh, that we were able to engage with, with the youth. Uh, but even more surprisingly, uh, surprisingly it's our, our imam, uh, the lead imam, who is an enthusiast uh, cricketer as well, that he stepped forward and said that he would be the main activator. And not surprisingly, he's got three boys who would be part and parcel of this group. So there was self-interest there as well. But he, he undertook uh, the, the uh, training with ECB and then mobilized uh, the youth from within the madrasa. So, you know, we could tap into these people. Uh, we could only have a certain number, a mix of boys and girls. Uh, it wasn't just the boys of a certain age group uh, that we would engage with and then bring in the parents, both from the mothers and the fathers who would become interested in this and then build up the little uh, balloon into many ones and also then filter it out to the other faith communities. And I think as Lord Patel said, uh, the youth and sporting links uh, can open many, many, many doors indeed. And of course, our vision is, is to link up with, uh, with, with the local cricketing team uh, clubs and also link up with the schools and also link up with, uh, with other faith institutions and bring it within our four walls. Hopefully from March, April onwards, when the weather gets better, we'll probably move outside. So thank you very much indeed uh, to uh, Lord Patel and uh, Faith Associates and everybody else for having recognized uh, the contribution that Hayes Muslim Center and the community uh, that, that makes, not just with the uh, youth service, but with all the other services that go hand in hand. Uh, this has been a very testing and a hard time and to come out of it, uh, you know, with some recognition, I'm sure my local community will be very, very pleased indeed. Can I just say also uh, that uh, being at the bottom of the uh, listing, I've had the opportunity to see so much good work that our communities up and down the country do during this very testing and difficult times that we have uh, risen well above, far beyond what we would have thought otherwise that we would be capable of. And I'm really, really proud to be a Muslim and I'm really, really, really proud uh, that, you know, uh, we're able to achieve so much and there's so much more to do and learn from each other as well. So, Zakala Harris. Jazakumullah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, brother from Hayes Muslim uh, Center, Brother Tahir, uh, many congratulations to you and the community there. 
And um, thank you for your commitment and your patience this evening and your sacrifice of time on a Saturday evening. And let me turn now to uh, Lord Patel. It's nice to see you again, Lord Patel, of course, after yes. so many, so many years. So many years. Um, and I, I'm glad to see you again. Thank you very much for your patience this evening, for your sacrifice of time and sharing those words of wisdom. And uh, I know you're a passionate cricket fan. So I, um, I, I, I wish you all the very best in your role with the ECB. It's nice to see you again. Thank you very Take much. Care. All the best. Good night. Thank all you very much. Well. Uh, to you both. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Moving now to our final award for this evening. This is category number 11. And this award is for the best run mosque. And for this award, um, uh, please allow me to invite um, Sadiq Khan. Um, Brother Sadiq Khan is a British politician. He is the serving mayor of London since 2016. He was previously the member of parliament for Tooting from 2005 until 2016. He has served in the shadow cabinet as shadow secretary of state of justice, shadow Lord Chancellor and shadow minister for London. He has been included in the Times 100 list of most influential people in the world. Um, welcome, uh, Brother Sadiq Khan. Uh, we look forward to listening uh, to you and my apologies for the delay. Um, you are our, our last uh, award giver for this evening. And we really, really uh, thank you very much for being very patient uh, this evening with us. Welcome, Blur Sadiq Khan. Assalamu alaikum and good evening, everyone. It's a real privilege to be able to record this message in support of the British Beacon Mosque Awards. And I want to start by thanking Faith Associates for hosting this fantastic event, which is showcasing the profoundly positive role mosques play in communities up and down our country. As the Mayor of London, I've always believed in building bridges, not walls. And your actions serve as an example and an inspiration to us all and demonstrate that our diversity isn't a weakness, but our greatest strength. As a Muslim, Alhamdulillah, as a Londoner and as a proud Brit, I know our mosques make a vital contribution to the common good. So I'm honoured tonight to have the chance to present the award for Best Mosque 2020. Unsurprisingly, there's intense competition for this award. But after careful consideration, the judges, uh, not me I should add, were able to shortlist five contenders. They are the Al Medina Mosque, Green Lane Mosque, Minaj al Quran, Ashford and Staines Centre, and MSKI Leicester.
It goes without saying that each of the mosques shortlisted this evening deserves to be congratulated and commended on their work. But of course, there can be only one winner. And so, without further ado, I'm delighted to announce that the winner of the Best Mosque Award 2020 is the Al Medina Mosque. Congratulations. Um. Jazakumullah, thank you very much for the contribution of Brother Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London. We are attempting to establish connection with Al Madina Masjid in Barking. Uh, Madina Masjid in Barking once again uh, joins our platform. And once again, Brother Sadiq, uh, welcome. Um, you've had another await for this. Uh, award since the our previous discussion uh my my apologies for the delay uh, we look forward to listening to you many congratulations to you all and once again brother Siddiq, uh welcome um you've had another a wait for this uh, <laughs> award since the our previous discussion uh, my, my apologies for the delay. Uh, we look forward to listening to you. Many congratulations to you all. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Brother Mahmoud. Um, thank you very much again. Uh, Alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah. Um, and once again, Brother Siddiq, uh, welcome. Um, <laughs> you've had another await for this uh, award since the, our previous discussion. Uh, my, my apologies for the delay. Uh, we look forward to Hello, can you hear me, Brother Mahmoud? Yes, I can hear you. We can see you. We look okay. forward to listening to you. This exactly. is live now. <laughs> Sorry, we're having a few te technical difficulties there. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Um, all praises to Allah. It's only because of the cause of Allah that we're able to be in this position. Um, I'm absolutely um, humbled by this award. Uh, I think... Um, a massive thank you to the trustees, the volunteers, and the communities of Barking and Dagenham. Um, and it's even more humbling when you consider we've just sat through nearly two and a half hours of amazing work uh, done by Muslim communities up and down the country. And, and I'd just like to say, I think mosques and Muslim centers up and down the country have always, have always worked tire tirelessly to serve their communities, but have always done it very quietly. Um, which is why it's so sad to always see us portrayed in a negative light in the media when a minority do something wrong. But, you know, I think the pandemic in a perverse way has allowed the true value and the worth of the Muslim communities and their work to be seen firsthand. And I think it has projected Muslim communities to the forefront in a really positive light. And I think the challenge for us now is to continue to build on that positivity and go from strength to strength. I'm absolutely humbled by the pockets of excellence, excellent work which is being taken place up and down the country. And there are no losers today. Um, I think everybody's a winner. I congratulate all the other massages in this category. I think you're all deserving of it. I accept this award on behalf of all of you because I think you all deserve it. For our work, I'd just like to say this. I think we're a masjid which is very holistic. We work uh, across the board. We don't specialize in one discipline. We actually um, use every opportunity to strive to do the best in every discipline. And one example is this. Last year, alhamdulillah, at these same awards, we won the best women's service uh, for our high bespoke women's center. And since that time, since last year, in the last 12 months, we've generated 26 separate income streams for women in our community. These are women who are providing a service, and then we've generated methods for them to earn income from it. And, you know, in one year, 26 income streams is in itself an amazing achievement. We, you know, throughout the evening, people have talked about the importance of youth and sports. We provide a real sophisticated sporting program where we provide 12 separate sporting disciplines. Um, and we're leading on a number of national projects. Um, but where we use sport to bring our youngsters in and to mentor them um, and to work with them. And, you know, um, one, one of my mottos is always never sit still, always challenge yourself um, and challenge yourself aggressively. Um, and, you know, we have just about recently taken on a project where we've spent nearly £35,000 in putting together a, 
uh, sensory room um, and we're putting together a special needs project which we're going to deliver to the wider community and you know this is an arena which is difficult it's not an easy arena it's a highly sophisticated demanding um, and professional arena where you can't cut corners you know and one of the reasons we've done it is because we want to challenge ourselves to be even better you know so um, uh, alhamdulillah all I can say is thank you I want to thank uh, Brother Mahmoud, I think I need to thank Shokat and the entire team at Faith Associates, uh, because I, I, I echo what one of the brothers said earlier on, unless we have luminaries like Brother Shokat, unless we have people who are willing to put their head above the parapet and take some of the flack that comes with doing this type of work, we don't move forward. You know, and I think um, if the mayor is still listening, I think you've got a bit of a gem in Shokat. Uh, grab hold of him and keep him there, don't let go of him. But the other thing I will say to the Mayor of London is this. Remember the name Al Medina, okay? And remember the name Ashraq Sadiq, because we're the best run mosque, and I'm going to come knocking on your door because we, were, we want to become even better. Jazakumullah Haid. Thank you, everybody. May Allah bless you all for your wonderful work, and may he continue to put his blessings into your efforts. Jazakumullah Haid. Jazakumullah, Brother Ashfaq Siddiq and Al Medina Mosque Barking. Many congratulations to you and congratulations to all of the people who participated today and the winners. And it only leaves now me to uh, re invite Brother Shawkat for some final thoughts of reflection on the evening and the work of Faith Associates and Beacon Mosques. Brother Shawkat, over to you. <laughs> Dr. Mahmoud Chandia, first of all, thank you to you for hosting such a challenging program that's lasted over two hours now. Uh, you know, with, I think pretty, it's happened pretty seamlessly, but I think the, the gel between all this has been you, and I can't thank you enough for your professional, studious, eloquent, erudite method of chairing. It's always a pleasure. It doesn't even feel like two hours to me. You've done it so smoothly. I wish to thank you. Thank your family as well for the wonderful support that they give you and us. And I just want to also just reiterate what just the Beacon Mosque, Al Ashfaq just said that everyone this evening is a winner. Uh, everyone, mashallah, has made Islam proud, made Muslims proud, made this nation proud. I know for a fact that uh, because Ashfaq is in London, many diplomats, many emissaries from different countries come to London and when they want to visit the Muslim community, the British Muslim community's institutions, Ashwaq's mosques is one of those places they go and visit. And this is a proud moment, not just for his community, but for the Muslim community that I know that people have come from France, from New Zealand, from Australia, from Japan, They've seen this facility and gone back and replicated some of these ideas. And they truly are a beacon, but not, they're not the only ones. The shortlisted other four, Al -Madi, uh, a Greenland Mosque in Birmingham, Al Midad al Quran in London, uh, the Masjid Al Hussein uh, in Leicester. Masjid Al Hussein, if, I, if you allow me, wonderful institution, fantastic young leadership, uh, an, an organization that's doing great work in Leicester. And it was very tough for the judges, very, very tough to give this award this year. This is the top award of one of the best mosques in the UK. And Ashwood and Stain's Community Centre, a new masjid that's done outstanding work. So look, everything that uh, people have done this year under these very, very difficult conditions. My personal view is that if masajids can achieve this level of excellence during this pandemic, what can be achieved when this panic pandemic goes, inshallah? When this pandemic pandemic goes, inshallah, with Allah's will, when Allah removes this from us, I think that British mosques will be beacon, not just in the UK, but beacons for the world. And the uh, values and the culture and the leadership that's been developed in some of these institutions is exemplary. And Faith Associates, with this team, with this partnership with Minab and the other Council for Mosques in the UK. And I just want to quickly mention that the Council for Mosques Bradford, you heard from Zulfika Karim, Dr. Zulfika. You heard uh, from Lancashire Council for Mosque, Nottingham, uh, 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 Bristol, various parts of London. All these huge Council for Mosques get 
getting these people together, they're doing wonderful work and may Allah progress them and make their work more prosperous. With any, without taking too much of more time of the community, I just want to thank the team at Faith Associates that put this together, the huge number of support from the families of the people that work at Faith Associates, and all the very sincere and humble and dedicated volunteers of the Masajid, these houses of Allah. I salute you, I honor you, and we ask you to keep us in your du'as because 2021 we plan to do an even bigger event, inshallah, and hopefully we'll be able to meet face to face. And we will also have, inshallah, Mosque Expo 2021, where we will bring some of the best masajids, the top leaderships, male and female, together to win, to celebrate and to learn from each other. All praise are due to Allah. Any mistakes are ours. We thank you once again for your support this year. We ask you to remember us in your du'as. Sheikh uh, Chandia, I also want to make a, a final thank you to you. And I know that you are producing a, Quran, a translation of the Quran. I've had the pleasure of reading some of the scripts. It is a wonderful piece of work. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you bring this book, this beautiful piece of work that you've done, the scholarly work that you've done, you bring it to the world. And I can't wait for this uh, edition that you put together. And I also want to thank your teacher that unfortunately passed away, uh, the Dean of Bury, uh, who passed away in Canada. May Allah bless his soul. May Allah pr uh, give him the highest place in Jannah. His, uh, uh, his students are doing marvelous work and you are one of his students. And I'm humbled to be one of your students as well. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. And the last words are you, sir. But well, I think we should conclude with a dua for everybody, and it's only right we have a very short dua. So, Alhamdulillah, Hamdan Kathiran Mubarak and Tayyiba. All praises belong to Allah, an abundant good praise that is blessed to Him, blessed for Him as our Lord. May love and like. May Allah send the blessings upon all the prophets from Adam, peace be upon him, to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the chosen one, the selected one. Uh, may a salutation, a salutation upon these prophets by which hearts become pure, by which distresses and sadnesses uh, are cleared, and by which sins are forgiven, a salutation and blessing that are both irrevocably forever until the day of judgment. We plead to Allah that he shows us the truth as it is and grant us the ability to pursue it and follow it. And we plead to Allah that may he guide us to see folly, falsehood, deceit, uh, as they may be, and grant us the ability to stay away from it. May Allah accept all the efforts of all the participants today, even those who have not been uh, shown across the platform today. Uh, there are many unsung heroes, the ulama, the committee members, the alima, the, the alimat, the, the volunteers, the, the youth, uh, all our guests. May Allah bless you all and grant us the ability to embrace tomorrow's world and serve our uh, common human uh, fraternity to please our Creator. Jazakumullah. Rabbana taqabbal minna. May Allah Rabbul Alamin accept our prayers. Inna ka and the Samuel Alim, you are all you are all hearing, all knowing. Jazallah Muhammad.